All right. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited um, for our first official webinar, Life After Loss. Um, and today we're going to be talking about how to get through uh, the loss of a miscarriage or when you're suffering the loss of a loved one. Um, but not only that, we're going to talk about how to support someone through those moments as well. So thank you for joining in on our first official webinar. Um, and I'm going to start off by sharing a little bit about who I am. Uh, my name is Tierra Nicole. I am a published author of 23 and Finally Loving Me, and also When Life Gives You Lemons. I'm a motivational speaker who focuses on women's empowerment, personal development, and self-love. And I'm also a development coach um, and the owner of Nicole's Network, which was established in 2016. Um, so I'm coming up on three years, which is really, really exciting for me, which you know we're going to celebrate that as well. Um, but the reason that we're here today is also because I'm a mother of two angels, um, Christopher and Christian. I lost twins in 2016. October 27th was the day that I delivered them. Um, so that is the day that I recognize um, you know, the, the day of their birth uh, in their own right as well. So those are my angels and they're really my, the core reason of my why. So I wanna know a little bit about you guys. Um, I think I have a good idea who's on the call so far, um, but if you could just insert in the chat um, your name, uh, if you have a loved one that you're grieving or have grieved, if you can put the name and birthday of the angel, uh, what city you're coming from, and what you're hoping to get from today's webinar. Um, so I'm going to open up the chat, give you guys a few moments to just put your answers in there. I'd love to hear where everyone's coming from. Um, as I stated, uh, you know, my, I live in the DMV area. Um, obviously, I heard about the webinar because I'm hosting it. <laughs> um, but what I'm hoping to get from today's webinar is to learn a little bit more about what is needed in the world of grief and how I can be of best support to those who are grieving as well. Um, so if you feel comfortable, if you can just put some information in the chat box. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Still getting a little adjusted to this webinar software, but um, you guys still have the chance to put your information in there. Hey, Jay, <laughs> what's up? Thanks for joining. All right, let's So I've added the questions to the chat. Feel free to jump in whenever you'd like. Um, I'm excited to have you guys here as well. Um, so we can go on to the next part of the workshop or the webinar as you guys are filling that information out as well. So why are we here, right? That's ultimately the biggest question on the table. We're here to discuss how to live whole, happy, and productive lives following one of the greatest losses of all time. Uh, working through concrete and actionable steps towards healing and also creating a life that honors the memories of your angels. Um, so for me, the whole birth of N Nicole's network and really putting my all into this business and especially um, uh, life after loss is because I, when I left my twins in the hospital, I made a vow to them that 
I would live every day working to create a life that lived in their honor. Um, so we're going to talk about basically how to do that. Um, and Sharika Hager, uh, wanting to know healthy ways to honor her memory. Absolutely. We're definitely going to get into some of that as well. Um, and so I do recognize not everyone has miscarried children. Or, or babies, but we've all lost someone that we love. So I do hope that you guys are able to get something from today's webinar that you can apply in creating that life after loss. Um, so we're also going to discuss how to support a loved one who may be suffering that heartbreak, right? And the reason that I feel that is important is because when I was grieving the loss of my twins, I realized not only were there not a lot of resources for grieving mothers, but there's also not a lot of resources for the father of that baby, the grandparents of that baby, um, aunts, uncles, siblings, cousins, you know, there's not a lot of information out there on how to deal with that grief for yourself and also how to support someone through that. And at the end, I'm going to offer some long-term resources to help you and your loved ones move forward in creating life after loss. Because that's really what this whole program is all about. Um, first, I would like to take a moment of silence for our angels. Um, if you have pictures, please look at them. I'm going to pull up my pictures as well. Um, if you have names for your angels um, and you feel comfortable, please share them in the comment box, um, just so we can all pay respect to the loved ones that we've lost. Um, and just take a moment to appreciate the love you felt through their angels. And thank God for allowing you to experience that love. Um, especially those of us who have experienced love from the inside out and appreciate all the good that has come from it. So we're going to take a moment of silence. So these are my angels. Um, I always find a, a, a difficult dance between how open I'm going to be with Nicole's network, um, and especially when launching this nonprofit, Life After Loss, and how much is too much to share and things like that. Um, so when preparing for today's workshop, I definitely wanted to share with you all. Um, but then, of course, there are some pictures that you know I'll probably never share just because those are some private memories as well. Um, but these are my twins, um, Christopher and Christian. Uh, Christopher was old enough to be able to hold in, in the delivery room, Christian was not. Um, so that's his little feet right there. <laughs> um, and his handprints on the card and feet prints as well. Um, so those are my angels. Uh, I definitely feel them still in my heart for sure. So my 10-step guide to creating a life after a loss. The first part, you have to grieve completely and wholly, and you cannot put a time frame on grief. Uh, when I was going through it, and there were plenty of people who wanted to uh, rush my grieving process or tell me to get through it or you should be feeling better and... Grief is just one of those things where you just can't brush past it. You have to feel it completely. Um, and I truly believe that if you have ever lost a child or even a parent, those are some of the hardest types of grief to get through. Um, I have not lost a parent, thankfully, um, but I have lost my children. And I do know people who have lost parents and grieved for years. Um, but I definitely think you have to find a way to grieve completely. Then you want to start reflecting on some of the good. Reflect on 
you know, the good memories that you had, the, the growth that has come from it, um, the love that you shared and the experiences that you've had over that time period, no matter how short that time may have been. Um, and start to create a new normal for yourself. Um, so for me, that looked like figuring out, I had to learn how to be happy again. I had to learn what it meant to find joy. And that was a really difficult process. But once I found it, it was something that I couldn't not have. Um, it became a requirement in my life to have genuine joy in my heart. I'm not saying I don't have sad days. I'm not saying that I don't have frustrating days. But I've learned to create joy regardless of my circumstances. Um, and then the hardest part was really forgiving myself and learning to recognize that there wasn't anything that I could have done different. And even if there was there's no sense in beating me up, myself up about it um, and learning to just say, you know what, it happens. What am I going to do moving forward? Right. Um, and then step five is definitely healing that hurt. So making sure that you're t like, I would strongly recommend therapy. If you've ever struggled with grief, um, journaling, reading, um, going on vacation by yourself, like some of those things are some of the most refreshing experiences and making sure that you're connecting and growing and working through the pain and not just covering it. Um, one of the most challenging steps was definitely trusting God again. And it was really because, um, and we'll get into a little bit about that later, but when you're going through grief and you hear people say, things like, it's all God's plan. While that may be a statement made with good intentions, it, for me at least, it led me to remember that I serve a God that could have saved my children and chose not to. And so it really created a, a pull and even a tear in my relationship with God because I, I was struggling to trust him again. So that was something that I really had to work through. And honestly, that was one of the longer steps in my healing process, um, learning to get back into an active relationship with God and understanding that, yes, it is his plan and all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And really believing that means even though it hurts like hell, there has to be something good coming next. Um, so starting to create new beginnings, that was when I started deep diving into my business, um, Nicole's Network, uh, working towards the release of my first book, really just growing as a person, understanding who I am post-loss and understanding what I needed from myself, most importantly, and learning to put myself first, learning to be there for myself and show up for myself and making sure that I'm pouring from a full cup and putting that self-care as a priority. And then with these new beginnings, I started to embrace the future a little bit more, um, looking forward to certain things and getting excited about things. Um, one of the things that I I've been so excited about for weeks is this webinar, because it's definitely a new beginning. Um, it's a start towards a, a new future for me um, and learning to embrace that wholeheartedly. Then you start living in their honor. My first book release party was the biggest breakthrough in my healing process because I got the opportunity to stand in front of my family and friends and say, you know, this is for my twins. This is li me living in their honor. This is me working towards doing things that make them proud to call me mother or mommy or whatever they would have called me. Um, but learning to create different opportunities that really and truly live in the honor of my loved ones. And then the last step is really where I'm at now um, and really deep diving into now is each one reach one. We all go through it. And when it comes to miscarriage and, and infertility, one in four women deal with it. And not, not only is that 25% of the female population, there's also many other family members and friends and partners and 
godparents and the support system. There's so many other people who were hoping for a healthy baby and ended up with an angel. So we have to be conscious of that and also work towards reaching out and helping that next person. So although it's not always easy to talk about some of this, the losses that we've had in our lives, we are overcome by the power of our testimony, which means that we have to be open and share because you never know who you're talking to and what they've dealt with. They might need to hear that they're not alone. And that could be the one moment that saves them from depression, suicide. Like there's so many other things that can be triggered by grief and definitely taking that serious. So even if miscarriage or infertility is not your story, whatever your story is, make sure that you're open about it and sharing it with other people so that we all can grow and heal and develop together. So next we're gonna go into how to support a loved one right? Things to say. And as I'll go through these, you'll notice that some of the important things to say come in the forms of questions, not statements. So how can I best support you? What do you need from me? Right? How are you feeling today? How, what do you need today in this moment? Can you share some memories of your loved ones with me? I'd love to hear more. Just asking questions to put them in a safe space to be vulnerable. When we ask questions, we're showing them that we genuinely care about their answer, as opposed to some of the next statements uh, where we're telling them how they should feel or what they should do. Um, so some of the things not to say, and these are all things that I've heard out of the mouths of people um, you're still young, you can always try again. While that's a true statement, um, it doesn't replace the love that I had for those babies in particular. So saying things like that, yes, it's with good intentions, but we have to be careful because it has a very hurtful connotation. It's almost dismissing the love that we have for the children that we've lost. Um, at least you still have another child left. When, uh, with the loss of my twins, it actually happened, there was a three week gap in between the two losses. And numerous people would say, oh, at least you still have one more baby left. Like, that doesn't take away the loss that I had in that child. And so being really careful about the words that we're saying and Again, it's, it's with good intentions and you're trying to make the person feel better, but sometimes we don't want the answer when you're going through grief. Sometimes you just want to know that someone's there, right? And we talked about it's all a part of God's plan and how um, that can have negative connotations or negative repercussions to it as well. So what can you do for someone who's grieving? Checking in consistently goes a long way even if you aren't getting the warm welcome you'd like. The reason I say that is because people notice who's checking in. People notice who's asking those types of questions that we talked about in that first point. And we also notice who's not checking in. We may not have the strength to say, you know, I appreciate it, or even thanks, or anything like that. Because when you're going through grief, sometimes it's hard to even breathe, let alone communicate. But I promise you, they notice who's there and who's not. Um, but understand that grief is a process that's going to take as long as it's going to take. Just two weeks after delivering my children, I was told, why aren't you happy yet? Um, you should be thankful for the life that you have. And um, I even had a loved one threaten to have me hospitalized for mental health because I was grieving. And I had to defend myself and say, you know, most women take six weeks off of work when they have a child and they get to go home with their baby. I took three days off, literally a weekend off and went and started a new job and all of that and went away for training and everything like that 
And I don't, I still have to deal with the grief, let alone the physical recovery of delivering children, right? So regardless of how long you think it should take, if they're still grieving, give them that time and space and energy to be able to get through that. Um, and show them love and support, patience, and encouragement unconditionally, regardless of their demeanor, regardless of their words. If you love them, show up for them when they need you most. And even if it's difficult for you, still show up. And it will definitely go a long way for them. Resources for moving forward. Um, so for everyone who has registered for this webinar, um, I will be uh, emailing you all a free preview of my new book. Um, Life After Loss will be coming soon. I'm very, very excited about it. And I want to say as a thank you for joining today's webinar, um, I am going to be emailing a preview of the book. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. So as you're reading through it, um, please just give me your thoughts. I want to hear your honest thoughts. Um, anyone who knows me knows I am big on honesty. <laughs> like, tell me the truth. Okay, guys. Um, but I'm definitely excited about that. Within 24 hours, I'll be emailing that out. Um, so be on the lookout for that email. I'm very, very excited about that. Um, and then also, I am launching a healing program. Um, you can book your free consultations. The he I have one healing program specific to grieving mothers, and then I'm going to have a separate healing program specific to supporting people through loss. Um, so you can definitely register. Um, check out my new website, lifeafterloss.me. Um, Really great stuff on there. Um, everything you can think of, including additional resources outside of what I offer um, through my a nonprofit. Um, you do have the ability to donate. So if you feel so led, feel free. God bless America. God bless you. Um, but also the registration for free consultations are available on the website as well. Very much excited about that. I definitely feel like this is the next step in my purpose and being able to reach grieving mothers because it happens more than I care to recognize. Um, not only is it one in four women, um, but approximately 20% of all clinically recognized pregnancies. That means they went to the doctors, the doctor said that they were pregnant, and 20% of those pregnancies lead to miscarriage. And um, that's not including abortions, that's not including terminations. This is miscarriages that people have no control over. Um, and even when you have had control and you've made that decision, it's still a difficult process to deal with. But 20% of, I just want a healthy baby, don't end in a healthy baby. And so it's really um, my honor to be able to connect with those mothers and help them through it. Um, so if you know anyone who is going through a difficult time or is still grieving the loss of their loved one or their baby, um, just have them reach out to me. They can get more information on the website as well. Um, and I definitely want to connect. I have YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, my new website, email, info at lifeafterloss.me. Um, definitely want to connect with you all and share um, just life together, honestly and truly, because um, I think it's important. I'm very active on social media, um, not even from a place of uh, just because I like to be on it, um, honestly. I do it more so to be able to connect with people who may be struggling, who may need my resources or support. Um, and I'm in the webinar with any questions. Um, you may unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat. Um, I'll be sticking around for any questions that anyone may have. I definitely want to hear your thoughts as well. Um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, please put your questions in the chat box if you have any. Otherwise, I look forward to you in our next venture. And I'll be emailing you the preview as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for making today's webinar a success. Um, I hope you got something from it. And for those of you who did share, um, I do hope that you got what you were looking for in today's webinar as well. Thanks, guys.